Hello everybody, hope you guys are all enjoying your Friday afternoon. Today we're going to be looking at two storms that could be impacting, one storm impacting parts of the western United States, and then also another one impacting parts of the southeastern United States. At the end of the video, I will have my uh, wind forecast, uh, my maximum wind gust forecast for the southeast, and then also my rainfall forecast for the southeast. Uh, so make sure that you are staying tuned uh, all the way until the end for that. Now, we are going to start off with the National Weather Service. We have winter weather advisories over parts of uh, northern california as well as some winter storm warnings and avalanche warnings over parts of washington and idaho and then also uh, for westernmost montana high wind watches dotted across here for uh, montana into wyoming and oregon and also for california and then we have same some flash flood uh, or some flood watches and some flood warnings in effect for parts of western parts of washington and oregon now we are going to be kind of breaking down why uh, this uh, this first storm, this southeastern storm, is moving uh, to the south and kind of staying south and then finally departing out uh, and not going actually all the way up the east coast as it would if we didn't have uh, this particular pattern. So we're going to be talking about that right now. Now this blue blob, this indicates lower pressure. So this is where your storm is currently located. Uh, and this red, orange, yellow, this all indicates some higher than normal pressures at 18,000 feet up in the atmosphere, which basically shows where you have ridging and troughing. And troughing basically means cold air coming south and ridging means warm air coming north so uh that's what those two terms mean now this red the the more intense the shade of red is basically the more uh kind of above average it is so you're gonna have more blocking over really centered right across you have a high pressure uh two high pressures you have one centered uh just south of james bay and then you also have one over wisconsin and this is going to be sending your low pressure uh, kind of to the south because it can't go right in through this uh, high pressure, which is blocking it. So it has to go to the south. So uh, that's what you're going to see kind of play out as we continue this. So this is getting into Saturday, and it's really starting to get its act together by Sunday morning uh, where it's over Louisiana and Texas. And you see there is really good blocking that's really stretching all the way from the Great Lakes through into the uh, Rockies. And this is going to keep the system from moving uh, north. So usually uh, you would have... Uh, you, you, if you wanted an east coast nor'easter or something along that line, you would want kind of blocking out here so that it wouldn't go, uh, the system wouldn't come out from uh, the southwest and kind of just move northward. Uh, but you also don't want this uh, that far to the east if you want it over the mid Atlantic northeast, really. Uh, so th in this case, we have it stretching really all across here. So that's why you're seeing uh, this system moving out uh over to the uh to the south and to the east so as we continue this you're gonna see how it kind of stalls out over parts of the southeast and then moves out as this ridging pattern starts to kind of move further to the east and also we'll show you for the west coast storm you really see it's just one big uh blob of higher uh, lower than normal heights uh, uh, height anomalies so this is going to be of course uh, bringing in a system and you see multiple waves kind of come in throughout the longer range now, here is what the European model is showing as far as uh, precipitation over parts of the southeast. So, you see, your rainfall starts to really occur by Saturday morning uh, over parts of the southeast, uh, including parts of the Gulf states. And then as we continue uh, into um, Alabama, Georgia, Florida, South Carolina, Mississippi, all these areas seeing moderate to heavy rainfall by this point, uh, which would be uh, Sunday night. And then into Monday morning or Monday night, uh, you're going to be seeing really the bulk of this moisture uh, positioned over South Carolina, North Carolina, and northern Georgia. And then it kind of uh, exits, but this is by uh, Christmas Eve that it's exiting. Uh, so you really see this rain really first started right around Saturday, and it's not exiting until Tuesday. So that's about four or five days of rainfall uh, in some isolated locations. Now, here is your total rainfall from this system. In these uh, grays, that's basically under a tenth of an inch of uh, liquid precipitation, but in the form, uh, this could be, of course, in the form of snowfall as well. But in, in this case, it's going to be all rainfall. 
Now, we have a tenth of an inch to half an inch in these greens, half an inch to one inch in the blues, one to two inches in the yellows and oranges, and then two to five inches in the reds. And then these browns indicate five to seven inches, and in the whites and uh, kind of purplish colors, that's seven to ten inches of rainfall. So, you're seeing a good area of about two to five inches which is really stretching as well as some banding here for florida uh you're really it's really stretching all the way from uh mississippi and louisiana eastward into parts of south carolina and then all the way into uh coastal parts of georgia as well now uh, you see, this is your rainfall. You have a big a bit of a bigger pocket of uh, rainfall here uh, that would be for South Carolina, the coastal areas, uh, and that would be right around seven and a half to eight inches. Now, this is just kind of with this model run. It's not really uh, what the rest of the model runs are showing. Uh, it's re it's really just some banding that this particular run is showing. But of course, this is definitely going to change, uh, especially this pocket here. So I wouldn't count on too much here, but I think a general uh. A, good amount of rainfall could be expected over these areas now we're going to look at a couple other models as far as what they're showing as far as rainfall you, you see the gfs is also picking up on this banding over the uh, over parts of southern uh and coastal south carolina and then you have this is really further to the south than what the european is showing the european is showing more to the north uh so really big areas like uh atlanta and then into Tennessee, South Carolina, uh, these would really be the bigger areas uh, that would be impacted, but now it would be more like Pensacola, and then uh, Savannah, Georgia, Myrtle Beach, uh, South Carolina, uh, Mobile, Alabama, these areas would be more impacted by this storm if the GFS were to play out. Now here's the Canadian model. So a lot of these models, what we can generally, we don't know the exact specifics, but kind of with forecasting, you kind of have to average out these models and see what they're showing in general. So this would be uh, really the uh, parts of eastern South Carolina and then maybe even stretching into eastern Georgia could be seeing the brunt of this system with more than five inches of rainfall like all over all these models even the nam is showing this which is more of a higher resolution model and uh it picks up on banding better and it's over pretty much the same area so this is verifying pretty good uh and we do think that there will be heavier rainfall over eastern south carolina and then even into uh parts of georgia and north carolina as well now we're going to talk about your wind gusts so here, uh, these are your wind gusts, so your maximum wind gusts within the six hour uh, period. And uh, this is in knots, so it would be a bit higher in miles per hour, of course. Uh, so it would be about, uh, usually just add about uh, or multiply by about one and a half, and you'll get, uh, or uh, one uh, and a quarter, and you'll generally get it. So, like, uh, for example, I'll give you an example. 20 would be right around around 32 or 34 miles per hour. So, generally around that, that it's not the uh, craziest uh, conversion rate. So, here for uh, parts of the southeast, you could be seeing gusts closer to 50 miles per hour according to the European model. You'll see in my forecast, I'm kind of toning it down a bit. I don't think you'll see these extreme gusts uh, in northern Georgia, northern South Carolina, southern North Carolina, but definitely a possibility that's here. You also see this pocket here of uh, really calm winds. That's where the low pressure is centered and just like a hurricane the eye is really really uh very calm and then once you get right to your, to the eyeball it's the most intense it's kind of like that but of course not the same magnitude uh you're seeing generally 20 miles uh, or 20 to 30 miles per hour around the eye uh or around the closed low and uh then and then uh, right around that, you're seeing about 10 to 20, 30 miles per hour in some areas. The coastal areas really look to be uh, staying in this for the longest period of time. Now, here is your maximum wind gust within that time period, which goes throughout uh, uh, Christmas. So this is on Christmas morning. Uh, so throughout Christmas, you're saying your maximum wind gust is going to be right around 50 to 60 miles per hour within this little corridor here. So this definitely could play out, but I'm going to tone it down as you'll see again in my uh, forecast. Now, here is the 
precipital water. So this is how much water is in the atmosphere. But uh, and if you were to kind of squeeze it out of the clouds, this is how much would fall in uh, in that instant. So in these uh kind of greens, that's above an inch. So in the greens, yellows, reds, purples, and pinks, and even blues, that's above an inch. Above two inches is the reds, purples, pinks, and blues, and then above two and a half inches is in those pinks so that's a lot of uh, water that's going to be uh, that could be squeezed out uh so you see, we do have a lot of moisture to work with, which is generally what I want to get out with this map. Uh, you have about an inch and a half in some areas to two inches in a lot of areas, and then some areas even ping up closer to two and a half inches of precipital water in the atmosphere, and then uh, kind of spins around. You can see it, uh, the system spinning around and then departs uh, quickly. Now, here is your total precipitation uh, here. Uh, kind of more zoomed out uh, and this also shows for the west coast system so we'll get to that right now so here's your precipitation for the west coast system you're seeing over washington oregon uh, and then eventually into california nevada uh, arizona new mexico all those areas could be seeing rainfall with this now this would be for sunday morning uh, and then now this is for monday morning you're seeing uh, really breaks up once it gets uh, you see this big stream of moisture as we get into washington and oregon again but as it starts to get further south it kind of breaks down uh, as it goes onto the onto the shore and then kind of moves out and then into the southern uh, southwest so that's where you're seeing that kind of potential for some christmas snow uh, over parts of the southwest and the rockies uh, in general now here is your uh, total snowfall out of this event and you're seeing a good two to six inches for the most part and then higher higher elevations closer to two to three four feet in some areas and even the parts in washington could be picking up right around 60 inches or five feet of snow from this uh, one system here's your rainfall again and you're seeing about two to five inches over the immediate coastline and that's stretching all the way down from southernmost california to northernmost washington so uh, really a widespread event stretching about a thousand miles or so uh, from from the southernmost tip of the U.S. to the northernmost tip. Now, here is my forecast that we're going to get into right now. And uh, so here's my forecast. Uh, you're seeing this your wind gust forecast. So your maximum wind gust with this southeastern uh, event, and this is gonna be your one to ten mile per hour range. So uh, these are all in one miles per hour, and this is going from the twentieth, which would be from today, all the way until Christmas. So one to ten miles per hour looks like a good bet for most of these areas, and that's stretching from the Mid Atlantic down through the southeast and then into the southern plains. Ten to twenty miles per hour uh, over parts from Texas up through uh, Arkansas and. Louisiana and then into parts of the deep south and the southeast. Now, 20 to 30 is more likely over parts of Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, uh, Alabama, Florida, into Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina. And then we have another pocket of about 30 to 45 miles per hour. And this is for easternmost North Carolina and then also for um, parts of uh, central and uh, central parts of South Carolina, Georgia, and Alabama. Now, here's your rainfall forecast, and this is all in inches, by the way, and this is going from the same time period, the 20th through Christmas. So, you see, uh, let's go back here, you see under an inch for parts anywhere from Louisiana, Mississippi, Tennessee, Kentucky, eastward, you're going to be seeing uh, under an inch of rainfall at least. One to two inches of rainfall at least in these areas uh, from eastern Louisiana, eastern Mississippi, into most of Alabama, all of Florida, all of Georgia, all of South Carolina, eastern Kentucky and uh, Tennessee, and then southern parts of uh, Virginia, and then all uh, all of almost all of uh, North Carolina, two to three inches even in parts from southernmost uh, North Carolina into all of South Carolina, most of Florida, most of Georgia, most of uh, rural, uh, actually the southern part of Alabama and Mississippi, and then the southeastern part of Louisiana could be picking up two to three inches of rainfall, three to five in a, inches of sn uh, rainfall in this uh, band here from the panhandle of Florida up through uh, into Alabama, Georgia, and then into South Carolina. And then finally, you're seeing five to eight inches potentially over parts of southern, uh, southeast 
southeastern parts of South Carolina where a lot of these models were picking up on a lot of rainfall and then into uh, southeastern uh, parts of Georgia as well uh, in this orange shade. It's my first time pulling out this orange shade uh, because you are going to be seeing quite a lot of rainfall. I'm thinking more on the on uh, the lower side of that 5 to 8, so closer to 5 to 6 inches. But definitely some areas could pick up closer to 7 or 8 inches uh, and maybe even more than that. So uh, definitely something we have to contend with over uh, the next week uh, and coming into uh, the Christmas week. Now, I hope you guys did enjoy this video. Please consider sure liking the video, subscribing, and turning on notifications so you never miss a video when I upload. Anyways, guys, that is going to be Eli the Weather Guy, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.